Welcome back. I do not remember where I left off last time, so we're gonna pick it up. Oh, darn it, I forgot. Oh, good. Good, I left the language settings correctly. Yeah, I guess I left after, I guess this says year 28. So we're gonna go to, well, first of all, I'm gonna show off all the progress I've made. Keep in mind, I've been playing the entire game with the German language setting, just to make things try to sort of challenging, because I mean, these math problems and the algorithm problems are pretty simple if you understand what they are. So I'm just doing something to make things more fun. Um, last time I was here, I was um, I discovered that it's possible to copy the source code of a program into another source code slot. So you can just create a backup or, well, yeah, I guess create a backup and then um, start operating on a new branch, which I thought was really cool. It's really nice of them to allow for that. Um, so we made it through chapters, well, I guess they've called this the tutorial chapter, chapter one, chapter two. See all these branches in the path. Um, hmm. So do we want to keep going up this way as the problems get harder? Or do we want to take a side path here? Um... Well, let me take one quick look at this, just to see how bad it is. Hey, how's it going? So, I think this said, for each two items in the inbox, something something in the outbox. And then we ran the program. Oh, I remember, I was having some pretty serious counting problems with this one. Right. I'm sorry, not... Dry means three. But, yeah, the point here was that you're supposed to get the or elements in um, sorted order into the outbox. And I forget why I failed this. Um, most of these problem statements are pretty trivial. It's like, you see, I took three items from the inbox, put them right here, and then started sorting things. Um, so I'm doing a bubble sort. So I'm sorting the last two, then the first two, and then the last two again. Or maybe it was the first two, then the last two, and then the first two again. I don't remember. But somehow I managed not to... Oh wait, no, I did succeed at this. This does successfully pass. However, um, I'm graded both on the number of instructions in the program as well as the number of steps taken. And on this one... I did not um, meet either goal. This took 133 steps to execute and had 35 instructions. Um, yeah, I'll save optimizing that for a later time, but it is lit to indicate that I've solved it. That's where we left off. So let's take a look at Spreaker Stockwerk. Great something, something, something. Something, something, something. Most of these um, text things don't actually matter for the purposes of solving the problems. Um, okay. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's asking for. I don't know. So you got a 3, a 1, and 1, and a 1, and a 0. So, part 1 of this is trying to figure out what it's asking for. And part of that could be just, like, create a new program, and it just copies from the inbox to the outbox, and see, like, what he complains, and try to decipher that, and then reverse engineer the problem statement based on the complaints. Um which might be the easiest way to go about this. For each, I'm assuming this address A probably means alphabet letter, I'm not sure. Or no, for, for each address in the inbox. Well, these must be addresses, and it's asking me for letters that are positioned at those addresses? I'm not sure. Um, I don't think I have a read from instruction though. Like, these are all the instructions I have to choose. Oh, we've got a copy from that accepts an address now. So we could say, 
Um, huh, how does this work? Uh, maybe it says copy from the value that is in register 12. Which means, finally, we get one of the most basic things. Um... <laughs> so I think what I want to do is read from the inbox, copy it into register 10, and then we want to cop... Um... Yeah, then we want to copy from... Okay, I don't know. Don't know what that's complaining about. Um, then we want to copy from the value that's in register 10, which is going to be the 3, and then we want to read that to the out box, and then jump back to the beginning. So here we have... yeah. I figured it out, guys. But yeah, this is... this memory address lookup thing is one of the more basic um, hardware problems um, that you learn in like computer architecture 101 or 102 um, and it allows you to create some really complex programs in fact you can write von Neumann machines um, or at least write the software for von Neumann machines using that kind of language all right it says five instructions and took 25 steps to execute. So, yeah, we did it, guys. All right, next one. Ketten Spreaker Stockwerk. Yeah, this is, this is a programming game. Okay. He's saying something, I'm not sure what. Uh, okay, if you say so. If you say so. And verboten. Okay. The thing in the inbox is the address, the thing, thing, thing. For each address in the inbox, read um, the blah, 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 object, blah, 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 and blah, 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 object in the outbox. Um, okay, if you say so. Well, we're going to read the thing from the inbox and put it in the outbox and see just what he says. No, you put the wrong thing. Should have put the T. So yeah, this 4 probably corresponds to somewhere on the board we have a probably an address slot 4. There's a T. Um, oh, nice. It lets me step back and take a look before I hit the reset button. Yeah, so it wanted the thing that was in address slot 4, is the point. Um, so, now we read from the inbox, copy it to address 24. Where's my read from instruction? Did I not have one of those? Um, do I not have a thing that says read from address slot 24 or 4? No, I'm not waiting on translations. You saw I solved that other problem without reading it, so... It was a pretty basic problem. Um, but wow, is it really asking me to create a read from instruction? Because I can do that, but it, that's such a pain. I don't want to do that. Oh wait, no, a copy from now takes additional arguments. Right, so copy from 24, but don't copy the value. Copy the value that's referenced by memory address 24. That's what I was missing, was read from is now just copy from with an additional argument. What a finicky language. All right, so then we put a jump, and there we go. I'm still not sure what the roof will go, go whatever that is. Uh, but clearly he's trying to get across the point that, oh, I wasn't paying attention. Um, for each address in the inbox, read the thing and all the something object in the box. 
until you hit a null, which is a zero. Let's step back and see. So 15, I think, oh, you're supposed to read the entire string. Oh. This is the fread command. This is not fread, this is like some kind of string read function. I get it now. Um, so, yeah, if we're zero, we bump, jump back to the top. Else, we just go back uh, here somewhere. Um, but we're also supposed to decrement um, the value that's in slot 24 so that we get the reading functionality stuff. Oh, what? I can use bump to actually decrement and read? Now that's nice. Um... Okay. I think this is good, though. Um, so if we're zero, we jump back up to the top. Uh, else we decrement that. This should probably work. So, yeah, here we hit the... Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm not holding a thing in memory. I'm not holding anything in my hand. So I have to decrement, and then if we're negative, jump back to the top and read the next address. Else, just jump. So yeah, he's reading the thing in four, decrementing this value, and holding it in his hand, and then looking that up, it's... That's not negative, it's a zero. Uh, so, I'm being dumb. We want to copy from there, and if we have a zero in our hand, rather than putting it in the outbox, just do that. I'm being dumb, but I think I finally got this. So yeah, now you have to read address three. Address three is a zero, discard the zero, read the nest address, and put it into slot 24. And then read the word backwards. Oh. H. H. How did you come up with H? Uh, oh, we're supposed to read the words forwards, not backwards. So it's T-H. Okay. <sighs> so demanding. So demanding. Okay. Copy from address 24. If it's a zero, you hit the end of the word and you go back to the top. Else, take um, the letter you've got in hand, print it out, increment the value in register 24, and jump back to, yeah, this looks fine. The only reason I thought it's it intended a decrement operation um, is because I've done enough with compilers and programming to, I don't know, try to think that there's got to be some kind of optimization in place there. Yeah, I think for more complicated problems, this is useful for learning German. Um, but I think here, the word that we learned was Daraufolgenden, or however you pronounce that. And what this means must mean all the following letters, um, or following, basically. Letters that are things that are in addresses after this address. Or maybe this translates to consecutive, I don't know. But if we see that word in future problems, now we'll know what to do. Alright, let's speed this up. I 
That's a lot of steps. Phew! Alright. And how we do recursus 203? Nice! Awesome. Alright. Ketendrer. Whoa! He's like speaking backwards. I only know that because there's the dot at the beginning and that German doesn't look like this generally. Ah, well. What something something? I think Hoyta means here. I'm not sure. Ha ha. Oh. Oh. Is this some kind of palindrome thing? A reversal thing or something? Something, something in the inbox. Something, something in the outbox. Okay. Here we go. Inbox, outbox. This can't possibly be right. Oh! Okay, so yeah, this is a reversal thing. He just wants the word lake. L-A-K-E there. Um, so, uh, for that to work, we have to read the thing from the inbox. Um, copy it to the thing that's denoted by register 0, increment register 0, um, or not 0, but 14, increment 14, and then, um, oh, but if we have a 0 instruction, instead of doing all that, I'm going to skip over this. Um, let's see, skip over that, and now we're going we're gonna to get into the printing routine. Um, so it's going to want things from registers 0, 1, 2, and 3. Oh, actually, here's how we do it. Um, so yeah, we're going to copy the 0 into the slot denoted by uh, that register. I increment the register. But we don't want to do that just yet. Yeah, so if we have a zero in our hand, um, then we want to zero out the value in the register. <laughs> oh, but we have a zero. Okay, so actually doing that is not too hard. So we want to copy that into there to so we can restart our accumulator um, and then we want to copy from the value indicated by that register oh no my mouse is acting up let's move this um, there we go copy from um, address noted by value in 14 put it into the outbox except if it's zero if it's zero, we're going to start over. Um, else, we're just going to continue this routine until that happens. Wow. Is it really that simple? That looks way too simple. Well, let's try it. Uh-oh. Yeah, okay, I was missing a jump instruction. Bump plus 14. So if we have a zero in hand, then we, um, Then we're going to skip the part where we would start this. That looks better. Alright, so increment that. And we just keep repeating this until, at the end of this business, we have a zero, because we've read that from the input. Um, this is sort of reading and um, so forth, I think, in general, can be referred to as parsing. Where we're taking a string and determining how it is to be interpreted. Oh no. Oh, you want the word backwards? Are you serious? 
Okay. Wow. Really? Really? I guess, yeah. If I'd been paying any attention, I would have known that. Okay. For each something, uh, okay, whatever. Put it reversed into the outbox. I mean, otherwise this would be really simple anyhow. Um, so, this is a string reverse operator, or operation. Um, hmm. Okay, well this is doable. Um, so I don't want to copy that value. And after we've put each thing in the outbox, we're going to decrement address 14 and jump back up here. Uh, but if we're negative, we want to jump back to the top. Which means I probably have one too many things that say jump to the top. Yep, I definitely do. Um, let's get rid of this, I suppose. And I think we're good. We got ten instructions. O L D. No, oh, no, that was not what we needed to do. O L D. Actually, let me run this uh, to failure again and see exactly where we failed. So it took copy from the thing noted here. Oh, I needed to bump this first. So bump negative, and then if we're negative, skip to the top. Um, and at the top... <laughs> oh dear. Well, that's kind of a mess, isn't it? Um, I think we want to move this. So, yeah, we're going to have that. Um, hmm. I want to move this bump plus instruction somewhere. I think I want to move it there. There we go. Oh, but now I need a, instead of jump if negative, I need a jump if zero instruction. That's what was causing me to hesitate earlier. Cause I didn't think that the jump instruction would work if I put the bump the where I put it here. There we go. Let's see, how did we do? Oh, nice. We beat uh, the recommended number of instructions and failed on the recommended number of steps. So, can we make this a little bit more efficient somehow? Is there any way I could reduce the number of steps here? Well, first, we're going to copy error in this. Yeah, I think this means paste. Nope. That means reset, I'm pretty sure. Oh, means paste. Never mind. So we've got our program here in um, program number two. So, question. Is there a way I can reduce the number of instruction or number of steps that this takes? Um, it might require an additional instruction. I tend not to think of the running time or the number of steps. Um, I tend to forget about that one. Usually if you're programming at this kind of level, your constraint isn't the running time, but usually the constraint is just the amount of hardware you have available if you're doing this kind of coding. 
you'd need some kind of really specialized machine um, to, if you were to strongly care about the performance of it. Um, I think the two extra instructions come from the fact that um, I have three words and there's two breaks between the words. And so if I were to move this bump until it was absolutely necessary, um, hmm. oh wait, copy to 14. Why am I doing a copy to 14? Oh, never mind. I know why. So if we have a zero, we can skip some of that. I think. N O W. Yeah. So I don't need to copy the zero into the memory. So that saved me a couple steps. In fact, three steps, right? Because there were three words. So in 10 instructions, we did what they did with an expected 11. And um, in 121 steps, we did what they did in a recommended 122. So yeah, we passed that with flying colors. Um, inventor bind. Inventor something. Um, Uber something. Control. This will be, I don't know, my... I assume he probably means greatest invention or something. Los gets. Okay. For each thing in the inbox, I assume that means for each symbol in the inbox, um, read the whatever uh, object of the something in the outbox. Okay. Um, wait. Well, 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 let's do the most basic thing. I have a few guesses as to what this means, but we'll know um, once we failed it. Four. Yeah, that's what I thought he was getting at, is that there are four A's. Whew! Okay. Apparently, um... Apparently you must be able to subtract letters from each other, because otherwise there's no way of doing a comparison. That's impressive. Um, okay, we're gonna copy this to here. Um, wait, we have to initialize this by um, putting a zero somewhere. So we're gonna copy from, oops, copy from 14, okay. And we're gonna copy that to 19. Then take a letter from the inbox, copy it to 15. Oh, wow, I need two accumulators, don't I? Okay, so we're gonna copy this both to 18 and 19. Um, so now we're going to have to do a loop. Um, so how does this work? Um, oh, I also need a way to terminate the string. Holy moly. Man, they did not make this trivial. I mean, I know what it's asking for because I failed it and you kind of explained it to me, but... Um, Hmm. I don't have a way of putting constants into the program, so I can't say just go from step zero to step... F well, there's my constant. It's always terminated with a zero. Um, so here's how I do my loop. Um, so we're going to copy from... Uh, 
copy from the thing noted by address 19. Um, we're going to subtract the thing noted in address 15. Now let's back up. So we've already got this symbol that we've put in address 15. Let's subtract the thing noted by address 19. Um, if it's 0, okay, here's a way we can do it. Um, if we have equality, we're going to jump over an instruction that increments address 18. Um, so, we're going to keep a running total of how many things are unequal. Um, oh, but we still have to do a read of address 14 every time anyway. Or we have to do a read of this. So we can't do a literal subtract. So our loop is going to be increment address 19. I can optimize this later. Let's just do it the simple way first. Increment address 19 is the last thing we want to do, actually. Not the first. Um, so we want to copy from the thing indicated by address 19. 19 is going to be what step of this alphabet are we on. If we have a zero in memory, we're going to skip to the print routine. Else, we're going to subtract the thing in address 15. Um, and then if we have a zero, we're going to skip the thing which says increment the value in 18. And then when it comes time to print everything, so we've got a zero in hand. We've already incremented 19 a whole bunch of times. Um, one too many, in fact, if we're going to do a direct subtraction of 19 from 18, or vice versa. Um, so, yeah, let's decrement 19, put it in memory, um, and then subtract 18, and print out the number, and go back up to the top. And that's our program. So here we go. We've initialized all that. Read a letter, put it over here. Read the B. Subtract the X. Not a zero. Uh, so then we increment both registers. Oh, wait, I forgot to put the thing um, jump if zero skips over this. Bump plus 19. Hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's mistaken. Hmm. Man, these increment decrement steps are not so simple. Um. Well, let me add another read instruction in. Um, increment 19. Wait, no, if we hit our zero there, we're going to skip this routine. Else, we're going to have to um, keep looping through the alphabet, or looping through the text. Uh, sub 15. Oh, here's our loop, right? Yeah. So, initialize 18 and 19, put the C over here, read this, subtract the C. If we got a zero, we're going to skip this, else we're going to increment it. Now we're going to read one, compare that. We didn't get a zero, so we're going to increment both of these. And ditto, ditto, ditto. Three, four. So, yeah, we did hit a match. So you see these numbers aren't exactly the same. And by the time we're done, 
Oh, I haven't won too many decrement instructions here. Um, so this shouldn't be a bump minus. This should be a copy from address 19. But we've already got address 19 in memory because we just bumped it. Uh, so just sub, sub 18 and print it out. So we see there's 14. Oh, wait, how did I get a minus 9? How did I get a minus 9? I read... F wait, where's that 14 coming from? Jump if 0. Oh. So yeah, if we jump if 0, then I have to read 19 and then subtract 18. Um, no big deal. So we're going to read 19 like this, subtract 18, and print it out. And that'll tell us the difference between the two counters, which is the number of times this particular instruction got skipped. to think, is there a better way I can do this? Because clearly I need two memory addresses, one to keep track of the count, um, and one to keep track of the number of matching elements. Well, I guess I need the third to keep track of what element did I just read from the input, so... Uh, yeah, I do need all three of those memory addresses. Now, is there any more efficient way to execute this? I don't know. 16 is good. How'd we do here? Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, we took 425 steps. Uh, the goal was 393. So, we're kind of over on the goal. Just a bit. Alright. Probably because, well... I don't know, this is pretty complex, just the way I wrote it. Um, do I really need to keep two accumulators? Probably. Yeah, I don't know. I do not know. But yeah, if I'm off by like 38 something steps, that means that um, I'm doing way more than I need to here. It's not just a matter of being off by one, it's that my algorithm has an extra step in it that it doesn't need. I'm just trying to think, is there some way I could, like, have a count of the number of positive times, the number of times I actually matched, as opposed to the number of times I did not match? Is there a way to do that? Well, before we do anything too complicated, we're going to copy this, back it up, and paste. So now if I mess this up, at least I'll have a copy of where I started from. Um, hmm. I should probably start over. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to try a different approach this time. So everything after step 5 is gone. We're going to try this again. Everything after step 5 is gone. I can always add the jump back in, too. Because we will need that jump. So, we've copied from the inbox to 15. Uh, we're going to subtract the value noted by the value in 19. So, and then if we have a match, 
Uh, we're going to skip something, I guess. This looks really similar. So if we have a match... I don't know. I kind of like what I did last time. I might not... I do not know if I'm going to end up with the same result. Which is why I continued this exercise. But see how close I got to the last algorithm I wrote. Um, so... Increment the value in 18. Um, we Either way, we do need to increment address uh, it's in register 19. And then jump back up. This is looking really similar. This is not the same thing I did. This is not the same thing I did. Okay. So we jump. Uh, the first thing we do need to check, though... Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, we do need to check, is the value that we got um, a digit? That's the whole point of what I did last time, is that I can't just assume... Well, I mean, in this case, I can assume that the this text is not just a digit. Um, I don't know if it's going to work using this subtract the thing uh, methodology. Yeah, no, I do need to literally read each thing in this. Unless I have some way of indicating this is the last uh, letter. Huh, I'm trying to think, is there any trickiness I can do here? Well, the only trickiness I can do would um, exponentially increase the number of steps, so I'm not going to do that. Um, what else can I try? Certainly, everything through step five is mandatory, but the rest of this, once we've got things in 18, 19, and 15, um, what can we do? It's This is really tricky, because I can't put in a literal... 14 and say count downwards from 14 to 0 or 13 to 0. It's not an option. Um. <laughs> oh dear. Of course, the most efficient way to go about this... Oh, that's crazy. The most efficient way would be to build a hash table um, to define the alphabet and then say A's, B's, C's, and X's. And then look at the thing I read. Is it just A, B, C, or X? And if so, grab the thing out of the appropriate slot in the hash table. And that way you only need to build the hash table once and you don't need to, okay, don't need to execute the entire program with every input on the queue. That's a bit expensive, if you know what I mean. Another trick you could use would be sort the input string. This is essentially really similar to a hash table. Sort the input string. Identify the beginning and ending indexes that match your input. And the difference uh, plus one is um, uh, that's the uh, count. But yeah, that's identical in purpose to a hash table and less efficient way of doing it. Um, but this language is really limited, so hash tables are kind of out of the question. So, yeah, I don't know. How do I beat my record?
clearly I did something pretty not right if I exceeded the expected instruction count by 40 something or 38 or 39 or whatever it was um, so there's got to be something I can do to to greatly improve well so yeah each thing I do is gonna have to be a read the thing indicated by address 19 if it's a zero um, then go up to the top whoops darn this mouse <laughs> and this is going to be go to the top the top's going to be our whole outbox routine you start the program we're going to jump like that so we skip our outbox routine our outbox routine is going to be um, we got a zero in hand we need to read 19 subtract 18 and print to outbox 18's over here there we go um, maybe just reordering that will help me figure this out better Wait, for each time we read from the inbox, we're going to need to copy it to 15. Um, and then we'll need to initialize all our stuff anyway. So there's no point in doing the initialization prior to the read step. Um, I could actually move this read step up here. Copy from 19. If we have a 0, go there. Else, we're going to need to repeat the loop of uh, this stuff until we hit that terminating condition. Um, so if we read a zero, do that. Else, um, subtract the val uh, not 18, subtract the, th the letter. Um, And if we've got a zero, skip over the thing that says increment address 18. Now we're going to need to increment address 19. And jump back and continue reading. But this is... Wait, I messed up. Inbox. Copy from Fort... Oh. Whoops. There we go. That's what I meant to do. So this is the same algorithm, just with the code reordered a little bit. It shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. But maybe somehow I managed to eliminate an instruction along the way. Or add one. We'll find out. This uh, reordering, resequencing a code things tends to create subtle effects that are profound. Okay, so we still have 16 instructions. Our runtime is 419 steps. So I think... I forget what it was last time. I think it was 433 or something. Now we're down to 419. Let me just check. What was this? This was 419, right? Or what was it? Sorry to bore you guys to running this one more time, but I just need to know which of these programs executed better. And then I could start with figuring out why. It's nice that they offer this kind of warp speed thing to you here, but, you know, if they offered a, a couple more settings to the right, that'd be 
even better. As quick as this is, it'd be awesome to see it execute even faster. First was 25. What we're going to see, so both of these were 16 instructions. Yeah, this is 425. So I cut out six instructions, um, which brings me closer to my goal, but not quite in reach of it. Um, so here we got bump plus 19, go back up here. Yeah. Basically what I've got to do is find a way to optimize this, where it says I'm incrementing every time that we don't have a match. If I could find a way to optimize that out um, without changing the functionality, then we'd be good. That's a lot easier said than done. Um, maybe there's a way to do it. For sure we have to perform this comparison every time, but that's not to say that we have to increment this every time we have no match. How do I reorder this and still come up with the same functionality? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. Well, I don't know. For sure it's necessary to increment 19 every time. Um, so this loop gets executed a whole bunch. Anything done outside this loop is not mission critical in terms of performance, but if I can optimize this loop then the rest of the program can do whatever it has to do to set the preconditions for this and post conditions for this to work. Um, so it'd be nice if somehow I could say uh, we're going to copy the thing from address 19, but we also need to increment 19 every time. Um, if we have a match, just skip back here. And the thing is, I'm not sure how to... Well, I'm trying to find a way to do this without adding another instruction. Maybe it's a futile task. Um, okay, I think to improve performance, I do need to add an instruction something that um, allows me to tighten this loop a bit. Yeah, you know, I can... Well, in terms of the instructions, I could make this as many instructions as I want. And I can make... I think what you're suggesting is I have a... I just move this up here. And then before we enter that loop, put a decrement uh, here. And that way, if we have a jump if zero instruction, this can just put us back up there. Else we jump back up here. So this would say now the value in 18 is going to be the number of matches. Um, oh, I see. So this is how... We subtract, I get it, so now 18 is going to be the number of matches, not the number of non-matches. And doing it that way allowed me to, um, I had to add an instruction here, um, which just sets this value up to be negative 1, so that when we increment it the first time we get back to 0. And then we read from there and have all our normal stuff. And then we print out 
the number of matches instead of the number of total minus the number of non-matches. Um, is there any more efficient way I can write this? Well, it's not more efficient, but I can do one thing to make this more readable. Um, here's our jump of zero. Um, I'd make it more readable if I stuck that at the end. I don't think it would affect performance at all. Um, you know, let's reorder this just for readability's sake. So print to the out box. Take our copy from instruction, put it down here. And don't have this jump. And we're going to have this, if we have a zero, do our print routine. And then we go back up to the top. So we still have 16 instructions in total. It's just a little bit more readable this way. And that was what I was thinking of doing, honestly. Um, I just hesitated to do it because... Well, okay. I messed up here. I messed up. Um, how did I mess up? Oh, our jump of zero... <laughs> this is still the number of non-matches. <sighs> dot, dot, dot. Um, there we go. Same number of instructions, maybe slightly slower execution, I'm not sure. Um, I was trying to save too many instructions, I think. Or not save too many instructions, but save too many steps. Oh wait, now how am I not... Wait, what am I doing wrong? Oh, the jump of zero is skipping the increment, else we're incrementing. So, basically, oh, here's how we do. Jump if zero will take us back up an additional step here. Oh, come on. My arrows are uh, defying me here. So if, if we have a match, go increment 18. Now note, <laughs> this means we're incrementing 18 more than we want to, um, by one too many. So before we go print out the value, uh, we're going to need to decrement it. So this reads the value but also decrements it so we can print it out properly. Still 16 instructions, hopefully not as many steps. But yeah, this game makes you experience all the off-by-one errors you'll wish you never had. The running time of this program is obviously on the order of the number of elements in the input queue, and uh, with the product of the number of elements are in memory. So that's why it has such a high running time. Oh, hey, look! Look, guys! I beat the recommendation. So 388 beats 393. I wonder what they were thinking with 393. Yeah, skipping to the end would be kind of nice. But then we wouldn't get to enjoy all the nice sounds of the program running, so... Alright, and with that, we're going to enjoy the video segment and call it here. So who is Carol? Hmm. Oh, it's in English. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Well, huh. <laughs> uh, 
Well, okay, well, I'll leave you with that. There's not a better note that we could possibly leave on. So with that, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, and we'll get there. Just give it time. All right. If you have any questions, comments, etc., particular, if you have suggestions about what to do about this, um, Thryernung thing. Uh, got some ideas? Let me know. Cause I don't know. This whole reversing a string thing is kind of complicated with this language. And I've got a 35 instruction program, and gosh, there's got to be a better way. So with that, yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed. It's been fun. And hope to see you guys next time. Take care.